You're now tuning into the Who and How Club with your host, Eris Dejan. Hello, everybody. Shout out to everybody. Welcome, 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 welcome to the club. Uh, it's the Who and How Club with your host, Eris Dejan. And I am celebrating my Canada long weekend, uh, recording this episode, talking to all of you folks. So I just wanted to say welcome to the club, everybody. Episode two, it's official. We're in. Now, um, it is the Canada day long weekend. I know a lot of you have plans. And if you didn't initially, you found some sort of way to make plans um, just so you could post it on Instagram and, you know, get hammered and stuff like that. Then, you know, the same thing you guys do every year. Um, <laughs> no judgment, of course. But uh, I wanted to just uh, shout out everybody who, uh, you know, the people who aren't doing the norm. The, the people who aren't doing the thing that everybody does every every year. Or maybe they've been doing it for so long that this year they decided to do something different uh, aside, uh, other than partying and drinking and, you know, just getting yourselves into trouble just to post it on Instagram. So uh, if you decided to do something different for this long weekend, this Canada Day long weekend, uh, as I have, please touch base with me and let me know. I'd love to, like find out what you guys did and what you decided to do over the this long weekend. Um, obviously, getting away tends to be a, a first choice for everybody, going to the cottage, just going someplace where it's warm so you could just enjoy some hot weather because we know in Toronto the weather the weather has been a bit up and down, but we, uh, we can't question God on that, right? So regardless, I want to know what you've been doing. Uh, not the partying, not the drinking. I don't want to talk to you guys. I want to talk to folks who decided to do something different this weekend. Uh, so please hit me up. Uh, if you forgot where what our socials are, obviously the website is whohowclub.com. And on all social media platforms, it's at whohowclub. Uh, and that's on Twitter, Instagram, etc. Um, you could always touch base with me directly. Only one heiress, O-N-L-Y number one, A-R-Y-S. And that's me on all social media platforms as well. Now, for those who are watching this IGTV, I'm trying to place myself in the right direction or, you know, place because I don't want the logo being blocked in the background, the plaque. So, all right. Anyway, yeah. Welcome to the club, ladies and gentlemen, once again. Um, so the past uh, episode one, Just Breathe, and the teaser episode, those two episodes were recorded and shot on uh, a Wednesday. Today is Sunday, and uh, I don't normally do much on Sundays other than fast. I am a bit weak, so bear with me because I haven't eaten anything for the day. Uh, but I'm also trying to figure out which days work best for me when it comes to talking to all of you and sharing some you know, sharing the episodes and creating a new episode and, you know, when, you know, what day is the best time to release some, some promo and, you know, tag everybody on IG and stuff like that. Just show you guys the material that I'm creating. So the last two uh, shots were, or recordings were on Wednesdays. Today's a Sunday. I'm trying it out. I don't think I'm going to stick with Sundays just because of the energy that I'm in and the space that I'm in when it comes to fasting. Um, I think this is a day that I should relax, but it's also good to just vent and talk to you guys and share some, you know, some, uh, just some, I don't know, some information, just have a conversation and let you guys know where I'm at. Um, now I do have, you know what, actually we'll wait, we'll wait on that for a bit. But another funny thing is the last episode, episode one, just breathe, um, <laughs> I had mentioned on the episode that I was going to add some effects in post uh, on a segment that I called DM me, right? And when listening back, I realized that I did not put those effects on. And I realized how excited I was just to put the episode out. So throughout that episode, you hear me saying, DM me, DM me, with no dramatic effect whatsoever. Um, so again, bear with me. I'm just getting getting my foot in with all of this and excuse me, sorry. It is just me that takes care of all of this when it comes to recording, editing, you know, posting, etc. It's just me right now. Uh, but as I mentioned before, the club will build 
and I know I'll have a, a team on on hand very soon. Uh, you know, in Field of Dreams, they say if you build it, they will come. So uh, I hope you, a lot of you know that reference or are familiar with that reference in that film. But regardless, bear with me. I'll try to not let that happen again. Um, but yeah, I'm just chilling right now, just checking in with everybody. Uh, another thing that I realized when I um, uh, I did the, the last episode, I left out a few of my podcast idols. So I had mentioned the, the people that I sort of got into from the jump, like the Bill Burrs, the Mark Maron. Uh, Ma- Mark Maron, sorry, I... Uh, I mentioned Charlemagne the God and stuff like that, but uh, I realized that I I left a few people out and I didn't want to forget these individuals that have inspired me from afar. Um, And it's really for you guys to know why I'm doing this and what inspired me, who inspired me. You know what I mean? Um, I think if someone has inspired you or sort of coached you, whether it's, you know, directly or indirectly, I think it's important to you know, put it out to the to the universe and just thank those people and give them some sort of recognition. Um, so, yeah. So here I go with part two of my podcast idols. Um, so I mentioned Charlemagne the God. I mentioned uh, Andrew Schultz and the Brilliant Idiot Show. I mentioned T.K. Kirkland. I mentioned Mark Marin. I mentioned Bill Burr. Um, a few other podcasts that I left out are... Uh, Oprah Super Sunday, uh, Super Soul Conversations that happen on Sundays. Um, I listened to today's episode, actually, and uh, she had Deepak Chopra, Chopra on there uh, once again. Um, so on my days that I fast on Sundays, I, I tend to start my morning with uh, an episode from Oprah's Super Soul Conversations. Um, just for inspiration, I treat her show as sort of like a reminder for myself on the positive energy that I need to keep in my life and the the positive mindset. And uh, yeah, I've learned much, 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 much from listening to her show. So uh, that's every Sunday that I listen. Uh, But I think she posts uh, like a couple episodes throughout the week and she'll have special speakers on. Um, And it's really just spreading that positive energy and, you know, the uh, the intricate details of the quote unquote secret and stuff like that. So there's that show. Uh, going back over to the co- uh, comedy side, I listen to Conan O'Brien's new podcast, which is uh, Conan O'Brien Needs a Friend, where he interviews a bunch of people who he has interviewed pretty much before uh, on his late night show. Uh, but I think he feels like he would be able to be. Uh, closer with these individuals that he has only interviewed on his show. So he brings them in and just has an honest conversation with them and gets to know them and see if there if there's a bond there where they could keep in touch and continue and develop some sort of friendship. I think it's a great concept, and I think it allows us to see Conan and his guests uh, in a different light because we've seen him interview these people in a different, just in a different way, right, on the show, and there's such limited time. Uh, on television so uh, you get to really uh, delve into um, these individuals and Conan himself so uh, that too I've learned a lot from Conan I mean I've been watching Conan since I was a child like I had an obsession with late night TV whether it was Leno, Letterman, uh, Craig Kilborn um, and, uh, and Conan himself so yeah So there are those two people. I don't know if I mentioned Godfrey on the last one. In Godfrey We Trust, another comedian, of course, comedian or comedy um, podcast. But the reason why I like Godfrey's podcast is that it's not just uh, comedy based. Like Godfrey's a smart guy. And if you've seen any of his interviews, he he speaks sense. Everything that he says really resonates with me. And there's knowledge that comes with his comedic style. Um, and he actually speaks about things that are going on within, you know, the week or the news or, you know, on social media and stuff like that. And he gives his, his opinion on them. And nine times out of 10, I agree with him, uh, and his perspective. Uh, but he's a smart guy and he's not afraid to show that intelligence, not only through his comedy, but when speaking to us and sharing his thoughts and, you know, feelings on, on what's going on. So, 
uh, I've learned a lot from him when it comes to speaking on the mic and how to do it and not being afraid, the fearlessness within that. Um, I mentioned on the last show that there's a, you know, I don't know if any, uh, if everyone is aware, but we got the loudspeaker network where the brilliant idiots are under. Uh, it's sort of like an umbrella and imprint where everybody's under that uh, network. Uh, brilliant idiots, the TK Kirkland show, um, and uh, another show that's on on there is the Casey Crew uh, show. So that's with DJ Envy and his and his wife Gia. Um, and they mostly talk about relationships and stuff like that, which helped me in my life and how I deal with things. So it's good to get a, get that different perspective and uh, from people who I look up to uh, relationship wise. So, I mean, yeah, that's that. Uh, another show that I listen to on Sundays is Star Talk Radio with Neil deGrasse Tyson. Um, Drink Chaps. That's a big one that I, I wish I didn't leave out uh, on the last show because... I felt like that show has, um, I think that show has really shifted hip hop. Like it's so important when it comes to hip hop, uh, to have like a person, a pioneer within the community to have a show such as this one. Like we know we have comedians, we have, uh, you know, people in relationships and stuff like that doing their own show and stuff like that. But Having a rapper, an artist, a recording artist who I grew up with have his own show and invite friends, like people who he has grown up with and worked with to like kind of like share a piece of themselves um, that maybe we haven't seen, whether it was in other interviews or through their music. And I think being able to dive into stuff like that uh, with individuals who I always wanted to know more about. Uh, is very important when it comes to hip hop because even sometimes through music, music just isn't enough when it comes to getting to know your favorite artists. Uh, unfortunately, sometimes he has to get them drunk in order for them to open up, but I think that's still a good concept. And uh, um, I live, I listen to that show religiously, and I'm glad that they're actually on a network as well, which is Revolt TV. Um, and of course, there's the Joe Rogan. I wanted to end off on Joe Rogan, so. I have Joe Rogan saved on my list. I know, you know, when podcasts are mentioned, uh, Joe Rogan tends to be the first one that everybody's aware of. Um, but even though he's been saved on my list, there ha I've never listened to an episode until recently when Charlemagne and Schultz uh, came on the show. Um, so that was like a three hour episode. <laughs> and uh, uh, it was pretty cool. It was pretty cool. I think Joe... Like, I grew up with Joe Rogan on news radio, and I know him as a funny guy. You know what I mean? So that's just how I, that's the Joe that I was raised on. So I wasn't, I wasn't like jumping to listen to one of his episodes of his podcast, but I knew how important his podcast was and how important it is uh, to the culture. So um, the podcast culture, I mean, so uh, I'm going to give it, I'm going to give his show a bit of uh, more of a listen and taking some of his episodes uh, i know he talks to everybody and he manages so i think i could definitely learn from his show and from him so yeah that's pretty much it those are my podcast idols that i've shared with uh, all of you um, let me know what podcasts you listen to uh, and who you listen to or who you admire in the podcast land uh, dm me at who how club or at only one heiress and let me know who you're listening to right now or if there are any shows you used to listen to and you decided uh, to stop listening to them for whatever reason. Are there any Canadian podcasts that you listen to or any anybody that you know, uh, aside from myself, is uh, hosting their own podcast or created something? Uh, I would love to know and maybe connect with you and them as well. Um, so, yeah. Uh, also, okay. Should I wait? Nah. We'll, let's just dive into this, this part as well, this little segment, uh, which is the review segment. Um, just wanted to say cheers to everybody. Check the logo. If you tag us or add us on any of the social medias, please do hashtag TWHC, which stands for the Who and How Club. Uh, we got the Who How Club buttons coming soon. need some water 
Ah, that feels good. And uh, yeah, just remember to connect with me because I want to touch base with everybody and uh, just connect and build on this movement that I have created out of my mind. Uh, okay, another thing that I mentioned last week was uh, I was going to write a review on the blog portion or the blog section, sorry, on the Who How Club uh, website. I decided not to. In fact, I began writing uh, or typing up uh, the review and it, I just couldn't get it out of me. I mean, the movie is just, I didn't have anything positive to say and I'm doing my best to you know, be mindful of the energy that I'm putting out there. Not to say that I'm always going to be like goody two shoes with or have only positive opinions about certain things, especially when there isn't much positive to speak about uh, on those things. But I would like to find the positive, you know, like the silver lining and certain things. So I don't want to focus so much on negative. But for this movie, like I think I was so heartbroken that I couldn't I couldn't write anything positive about it. Um I mean, the movie, I think the movie, it's been reported that the movie got taken out of theaters already because no one's watching it. Um, You know, Simon Kinberg, he pretty much repeated the past with X-Men Last Stand and now this movie. I don't think this movie was necessary at all. It feels as if they made a bad movie on purpose just to get, you know, get that, get the last few movies out since Disney already took over Um all of the Fox properties when it comes to, well, all of the Fox properties, actually. Um, (laughs) So, you know, there's another movie that's, that was supposed to be in place, the new mutants. It doesn't seem like that's going to be coming out anytime soon. Um, So yeah, I just, I just said, you know what? I'm not going to blog about it. I'm going to leave it be, let that casket, you know, leave it closed, bury it, let go of the X-Men because the X-Men are my favorite superheroes. Like they, they mean a lot to me. My mom taught me a lot about X-Men growing up and uh, those comic books kind of were, were used as a way for my mom and I to connect. And uh, the X-Men mean so much to me that like I, ha- I have to accept and let it go. And I understand that what's done is done. Uh, there have been some good movies and some bad movies. Uh, My favorite is the like the X-Men ensemble out of the X-Men ensemble movies. uh, Days of Future Past uh, went really well because I feel like they cleaned the timeline and then and they did their best to do so. And then whatever happened after that just came in and messed that whole thing up again. So it's just like, what was the point? So we got to let X-Men go. We're going to let Dark Phoenix go. We're going to let Last Stand go. And... uh, (laughs) Uh, X-Men Origins Wolverine it's all done we're ready for a new chapter I don't know if I'm ready for a new Wolverine Um, I don't think anybody could replace Hugh Jackman but anybody else outside of that or actually no one could replace Ian McKellen or uh, sorry Sir Ian McKellen or Patrick Stewart either in my opinion but those three actors I felt I feel like they should find a way to keep them um, I know in Legion on the show, I haven't started watching it, but I, I know Patrick Stewart wanted to make an appearance on that show too. So I don't know if that happened yet. I know the show is just doing like a three season thing and then that's it. I don't know. X-Men, Fox, you guys kind of ruined, messed around with my childhood a bit, played with my emotions, but what's done is done. Speak uh, In other Marvel news, what I will write a blog about and a review about is uh, a new video game that I finally got a chance to play, which is Insomniac's Spider-Man. I don't know if any of you are gamers out there, but regardless, uh, this game is amazing. And even though it's a brand new game for a brand new system, brand new generation, it still brings me back to like Activision Spider-Man uh, that was released on uh, PlayStation 1. Uh, you know, the one where you could swing on clouds and you couldn't go... Uh, on street level unfortunately i think you were able to go on street level in spider-man 2 but i don't think that that one got much attention uh but the first one was a very important uh game to the system um so now with insomniac's uh spider-man uh which they've done amazing things i think they finally perfected like how to swing (laughs) as spider-man like that feeling you being spider-man Uh, We haven't felt that since Activision Spider-Man and that Spider-Man was connected to like the TV show and, you know, the voice actor and everything like that was it was good. It was like the TV show. It was like the video game of the TV show. 
um, and it was well received and well respected and is a cult classic. But obviously it's a new time and Insomniac Spider-Man has taken the character to different levels. So I want to write a, uh, a little review uh, to play or not to play uh, game. And obviously based on my or sorry, uh, to play or not to play sort of review. And based on my feedback, obviously at this moment, uh, I obviously am gung ho for it and it's going to be a positive one. Uh, I don't see, there aren't any real flaws of, uh, to the game. Um, we also, uh, some other video game news, uh, the Marvel's, uh, Avengers a day game, uh, ha- is coming out soon and they've released some footage online and stuff like that but uh it's been released to like underwhelming uh reviews like no one's really impressed the game kind of looks outdated uh, but there's like a little people have been saying that there's like a little easter egg in insomniac spider-man and this avengers game uh due to like the location that the new avengers game takes place in and a little reference that spider-man makes in his game but all in all uh, I play video games, <laughs> and that's me just letting everybody know that I'm into games. I'm not a super gamer, but when I get attached to something and a certain game, I get excited, and uh, I do my research, and I get involved. So other than that, yeah, expect a blog post and review about the Spider-Man game. It's been out. Uh, it hasn't been a full year yet, so I'll be sure to send that to Insomniac and everybody else, too. Uh, Also, as promised, I said that in this uh, episode, episode two, I would announce my first guest uh, on the show. And drum roll, please. The first guest on the Who and How Club, uh, which will be episode three. His name, he go back, he goes... (laughs) Well, he doesn't go by the name. His name is Sage Longclaws. Um, Sage Longclaws is an individual that I work with. Um, He's actually a staff of mine, and uh, I find him a bit intriguing. Um, He intrigues me. He's a fellow Taurus, and we've had uh, some pretty dope conversations. I think he has a great perspective as well, uh, just on life and relationships, And we've had some dope conversations, and I thought that it would be great to bring that conversation or those conversations to the table and let you guys uh, get front seat on who Sage uh, Longclaw is. Um, Is it Longclaw or Longclaw? Sage, you're going to have to correct me on this one. But regardless, everybody will get to know Sage uh, on the next episode. And uh, when I have guests on the show, I'm actually going into their environments so that they're comfortable. Um, So I'll be meeting Sage where he's at. And uh, we're just going to have a great conversation. I have many questions for him. And I know he has some questions for me as well. And we're just going to get to know Sage and see how he likes to answer or how he chooses to answer the whole who are you and, you know, how, how did you become who you are questions kind of thing. And we'll figure out what makes him tick. And how he became who he is today and what's next for Sage. So uh, if you are wondering who Sage is, uh, follow him on Instagram at Sage Longclaw. If his IG is Longclaw, I'm I'm certain his last name is just Longclaw, um, singular. So at Sage, S-A-G-E-L-O-N-G-C-L-A-W. And you could touch base with him and, you know talk to him before he gets on the show but regardless you guys will have access to him once the show or or once the episode comes out and we'll put all his social media and everything um in the description but i'm really excited about that episode with him being the first episode uh episode to have a guest on it and for us to like just launch with him Uh, i'm excited for the conversations that we're gonna have so he's an interesting guy um what else? What else did I promise on last week's episode? Oh, yeah. I said that I would release or have you guys listen in, uh, like get first dibs on a new track that I was working on. And I keep my promises. So at the end of this episode, uh, I don't know. Should we play it now? 
Maybe we should play it now. Let me play it now. Let me let me give you guys a little snippet. The the song itself is gonna be on uh fuck it. Let me play it. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, let me do my quickie quick. Yeah. <laughs> and this is me. This is all me. Ain't no dust on my pen from the first I begin Just to convey this thirst that I quench I style on them all your merch gone in the wind I so search for the earth we all gonna win Been putting my best foot forward Came to kill this game cause I'm bored Any hate given we ignore it Gods of the energy envy me To the hearts we lords Bust bust up in that room swinging swords what happens when the rules ain't followed? Guess you was never really f***ing with the models Standing on ten toes Even if my jeans got a crease, never fold Even when it's peace, need a piece of the gold Even if it's for the cheese, we don't fit the mold This just how we do, how it bees, how it goes And if you're looking for the next, the poppin' Peep the flows, uh, uh Let me know what you guys think. That's the new track, Quickie Part 1. Uh, I called it Part 1 just because... Uh, actually, I called it Quickie because obviously it's pretty quick. It's a pretty short song. It's just a little, you know, like a little 16 bars just to give the people, let the people know I'm still here with the music and that I can still do what I do. And uh, I plan on releasing a few uh, other Quickies on certain beats uh, that I have in the vault. Um, and I just wanted to give the people some, some new juice before I release like my project that I'm working on and before I announce that. Um, so let me know what you guys thought. Um, you could DM me, like I said, at only one heiress and you'll have access to the song on July 12th on all streaming services, Spotify, iTunes, Google play, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. It'll be on there. Um, so I just want to say thank you to everybody supporting me and supporting the music and supporting the movement. Uh, I'm here to just create, um, and share with you guys what I create. Um, so that's pretty much it. Um, I wanted to leave, uh, on a, on a positive note, obviously, and to, uh, give you guys like sort of like a message of the day kind of thing. I think this will be also, this will be a segment um, as well, an ongoing segment with not only myself, but also the guests. Uh, today's message uh, would be for you to trust your gut. I truly believe like, I truly believe that the gut is the one thing connected to not the one thing, but a major component when it comes to obviously making decisions. And I do believe that it's also connected to the higher power. Um, when in doubt, you know, that gut feeling that you get <laughs> before making a certain decision, uh, you know, that feeling guides you to that decision that you eventually make, right? And that's you trusting your gut, Um and I feel like sometimes we're afraid to even do that and trust our guts. Like, but we have to be confident in that. Like the gut, it's showing, it's it's letting us know what the right decision is to make. You know what I mean? Um, just follow your gut. If something if something doesn't sit right with you, and you're feeling like you know what, this is something I want to separate myself from, or maybe a person that I don't want in my life anymore, and that's what your gut is telling you that it's best to do that. Do it. Or if it's telling you that, you know, you need to, you know, you need to um, get closer to that individual, get closer to that thing or restructure something or replan something or, you know, start from scratch, whatever it may be. If that if that's what your gut is telling you, then trust it. You got to trust your gut because that's the higher power talking to you and letting you know that you're on the right path and you got to trust it as well. So you trust your gut. You trust, you know, the above you know, the stuff that's above us um, when it comes to making decisions and stuff like that or, yeah, functioning in this thing we call life, this thing that we're all experiencing together. So in life, in your day-to-day, -day, do your best to trust your gut 
and I believe that you'll be happy. Um, I trusted my gut when it came to restructuring this, uh, this show, this movement, this concept that I have. This isn't the first time, you know, I'm doing this. Like I, I had a bunch of, you know, someone said to me this week when they heard my podcast, they're like, oh, wow, you're, um, you're in the beginning process, you know, or like you're up and coming is the word that she used. And it took a lot in me to, to like tell her like, hey, you know what? I've had episodes before. This is just like a relaunch. And, you know, I had a show and I, you know, it just wasn't going the way I wanted it to. My vision was was something else compared to what I had already. I don't know if you guys know, but I had like 18 episodes in the can. Uh, but the show itself just wasn't going the way that I wanted it to. And I had to trust my gut. I knew that I wanted to do the show. I knew that I wanted this idea in my mind. I, wa- I knew I wanted it to be a reality and to share with everybody and to have conversations. Um, but I knew that I would have to do it on my own. And that was me trusting my gut. Do I scrap everything that I have or just continue? Um, <laughs> and I contemplated on this for a while, but I scrapped everything. I, I ended up just trusting, you know, the feelings that I had in my gut. My gut was telling me, scrap it all. Start from scratch again. You're not too far in where, like, people are used to the show and everything like that. And, like, starting over from scratch, people would, like, ask questions and stuff like that. It's still brand new. This is my baby, and it's it 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 it's gonna have some rebirths. It's gonna grow. It's gonna learn, just like I'm learning. It's gonna, you know, improve the way I'm improving as well. Uh, as long as I water this plant and do it the way that I want to do it and trust myself in this, it'll be a success. Uh, and I feel like it's already a success at this moment the fact that i'm able to do this and talk to everybody and share this information with everybody that's a success in itself the logo in the background um the logo with the with the buttons on my shirt the logo on the mugs that i sip in this is mine this is a success i was able to take an idea uh, out of my heart and out of my mind and make it a reality and that's a plus there and that's all from my gut telling me what i need to do uh, and what I should do in order to be happy with this, my baby, my creation. So follow your gut and uh, don't second guess yourselves. All right. With that said, I hope you guys like the song. I hope you guys look up Sage <laughs> uh, and that you're excited for that interview or that, you know, that episode. I don't even want to call it an, an interview. It's really just a conversation because that's what we do here at the Who and How Club. We talk about who you are and how you became who you are. And, you know, where you've been, where you are now, what's next for you in the future uh, from your own perspective and how to answer the who's, the how's, the what's, the why's, the when's, and, of course, the how's. Did I do that right? Who, what, when, where, why, and how. Sometimes how. Yes. (sighs) This has been great. I needed this. It's been a long week. And uh, I hope everybody is safe and enjoys their Canada Day long weekend. Um, With that said, you are the Who and How Club. I am the Who and How Club. We are the Who and How Club. It's your host, Aris Dejan, signing off. And I'll talk to you guys in a few days. Thank you. Later.